Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fan YouTube channel. We've been on a roll with some of these Google questions recently, so let's keep it going. Today, we're solving lead code problem 2101, detonate the maximum bombs. Before we get into it, you guys know that a like and a comment really helps the channel grow, so please do that now. All right, you are given a list of bombs. The range of a bomb is defined as the area where its effect can be felt. This area is in the shape of a circle with the center as the location of the bomb. The bombs are represented by a zero index 2D integer array bombs, where bombs of i equals x of i, y of i, and r of i. x of i and y and i denote the x and y coordinates respectively, and the r of i detonates, uh, <laughs> denotes the radius of the range uh, when you detonate the bomb. You may choose to detonate a single bomb. When a bomb is detonated, it will detonate all the bombs that lie within its range, and these bombs will further detonate the bombs that lie in their ranges. So it's a bit of a domino effect. Given the list of bombs, return the maximum number of bombs that can be detonated if you are allowed to only detonate one bomb. So let's now look at an example here. So obviously we have these two bombs. We can see that their centers are here and here. And obviously, no matter which bomb uh, we detonate, because they overlap, uh, detonating one will detonate the other. So we can do a total of two. Uh, we have these two bombs here in this other example. And obviously, they are not touching each other. So it doesn't matter which one we detonate. Um, we would only be able to detonate one bomb because we can't chain them together. So whether we detonate the purple one or the green one, it doesn't matter. The answer will still be one. So this is pretty simple, uh, just visualizing it, but you're probably wondering how we're actually going to solve this. And, you know, it's a Google question. So and we're asked to, you know, find the maximum bombs. Like, are we going to have to use some dynamic programming? Well, you're in luck because you know that we don't do dynamic programming on this channel. So therefore, there's a video being up, so it can't be dynamic programming. And it's actually going to be a graph solution. So what we're going to do is now we're going to wipe away all of this text because it doesn't really leave us with that much room to explain this. And I'm actually going to show you how the graph is going to work here. So let's now do that. So I told you that we want to basically do this as a graph problem. But how are we going to do that? Right? Because we're given some coordinates here and their radius. Well, what you need to realize is that one bomb will detonate another bomb if the other one is within its radius. So in order to figure out which bomb can be detonated from where, i.e., you know, the edges in a graph, we basically just have to figure out whether or not, um, you know, two bombs are kind of within each other's radius. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a graph here, right? So this graph is going to be for each, um, you know, bomb. So I guess it's coordinate, right? We'll just call this like bomb one, uh, bomb one, and then we'll have a list of all of the bombs whose radius intersects with the radius of our current bomb, right? That way we know what bombs we can reach from our current bomb. So maybe this would be like bomb two, this would be like bomb three, and then so on, right? So bomb two will have, you know, some sort of ones we can reach and on and on and on, right? And what this comes down to is actually just a simple depth for search. We're basically just going to try all of the paths starting from each of the bombs and see basically how many we can link together. And obviously we have the relationship uh, of the edges here represented in our graph. So we can basically just try to connect as many bombs as possible and keep track of what that maximum answer is. So we'll basically do this for every single bomb um, and just try to basically see what the longest path we can go down is. And at the end, that's it. All we have to do is build the graph and uh, DFS it to find what the longest path is. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to try all the paths. Obviously, this is a we can't use BFS here because that would give us the shortest path. We need to try the, the full path to get the maximum possible length. So that's it. Build the graph and DFS it. So let's now go to the code editor with that in mind and actually type this up. Okay. Let's now write the code. So we know that we need to build a graph here. So let's define that data structure. So we're going to say self.graph uh, is going to equal to a default dict uh, where all the values are lists, right? So now we need to actually build the graph. So for every i, we need to basically figure out uh, whether or not we can detonate bomb j, where i and j are two pairs of bombs, right? So we're going to say for i in range uh, len bombs, we're going to say for j in range len bombs. 
And basically, if i and j are the same bomb, obviously we don't need to do anything there, so we can just continue. So we're gonna say if i equals j, uh, then we're going to continue. Otherwise, what we wanna do is we wanna check whether or not uh, detonating i will also detonate j. So the way that we are actually gonna figure this out is if the radius of i actually is greater than the distance between the points i and j, the centers, then we can say it detonates, because it's only gonna detonate if the blast radius of our current bomb will actually touch the center or the bomb uh, of another bomb, right? So essentially what we wanna do is basically just figure out if our current radius uh, is greater than the distance between the two, then we will actually detonate uh, a bomb from another. So we're gonna say if, so we're gonna say bombs of I, and then remember the second index in bombs actually represents the radius. So if that radius is actually greater than the distance between I and J, then we know that we can detonate it. So remember the distance formula, we're gonna say math.square root, and now we need to basically just say the distance between the points, right? So we're gonna say bombs of i, zero, so the distance between the x coordinates, so bombs of j, zero, and we square this, plus, now we need to do the distance between the, um, uh, the y coordinate, so, uh, oops, i, i, oh my god, bear with me guys, I cannot type today, uh, bombs of i, uh, one, and then bombs of j, one and then we also square this and there we go that's our distance formula so if we can basically detonate bomb j from bomb i then we want to add that to the graph so we're going to say self dot graph of i dot append j so that means that we can append uh, that means we can detonate j from i the opposite may not necessarily be true because j's radius may not actually touch i so that's why we only have uh, one edge. We don't have the inverse edge here. So that is actually how we uh, build the graph here. Pretty straightforward. Now we need to actually uh, define our result here. So obviously we've not detonated any bomb, so result will be zero. And now what we need to do is basically for every bomb, just see what the longest path is um, that we can get by basically just traversing our graph starting from that bomb. So we're gonna say for i in range uh, len bombs, what we're gonna do is we need to keep track of uh, where we've actually visited. So we're gonna say self.visited, and obviously we're starting our search at the you know ith bomb. So we're gonna add that to the visited set, and then we're gonna call our DFS function on you know our bomb i and we're going to kick off the dfs at the end all we need to do is say res is going to be the maximum of whatever our current result is and the length of self.visited so obviously self.visited is the number of bombs we were able to detonate by first detonating bomb i uh, and then obviously this is going to basically update our answer if we have a better one so last thing we need to do is actually just return our result, and we should be good to go there in the actual uh, main function. So now all we have to do is implement the DFS. So we're going to say def DFS. And this is just going to take in a node. And what we're going to do is we're going to say for child in self .graph of nodes, so basically all of the uh, edges that we can reach from this node, uh, we're going to say if obviously we haven't already detonated that bomb, we're going to say if child not in uh, self.visited, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say self.visited.add um, that child, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kick off the DFS from there and continue. So that is the DFS function, and that is actually the rest of the code that we have to write. Relatively simple, let's just run it real quick, make sure I didn't make any stupid mistakes, looks like it's fine, let's submit it, and, and we're all good, accepted. Coolio. So let's now close this and think about what the time and space complexity might be. So time complexity wise, um, as you can see, we have to build the graph, which means that we have to consider every single pair of, you know, bombs. So this part is going to be big O of n squared, because we basically for each bomb, we have to check if it has a connection to all the other bombs. So this part is going to be big O of n squared and then the actual DFS, uh, in the worst case, we would just visit every single bomb. So this is gonna be big O of N because we would just traverse um, from one bomb to all the others. Uh, so that's gonna take big O of N time. 
So our runtime complexity here is just going to be dominated by the fact that we have to build the graph, uh, which is going to be big O of n squared. So space complexity wise, um, it's also going to be big O of n squared, uh, just because we could have in the worst case that I guess all the bombs are centered at the exact same point and they have the exact same radius, which means that every single bomb would be able to detonate every other bomb. And therefore they would have edges from one bomb to all of them for every single one. So that means that our space complexity uh, would be big O of n squared. So that is how you solve this question relatively simple i thought it was going to be a dynamic programming question and then i realized you could use a depth first search and it's actually not that bad so yeah relatively straightforward kind of surprising given that it's a google question but it is what it is anyway uh if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and a comment it really helps me out with the youtube algorithm if you want to see more content like this subscribe to the channel if you're interested in joining a Discord community where we talk about all things Fang, interviewing, uh, you can have your resume reviewed by me, you can ask for referrals by other community members. If that sounds interesting to you, then join the Discord. I'll leave a link in the description below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.